Hello and welcome. This is my wife, Mary, and I'm Ed, and we are Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. We're excited you're joining us today. We present or expound on a principle or belief related to the SDA Sabbath School Quarterly each week. The Sabbath School study this quarter is called Family Seasons. This week's lesson on the family finishes with a study on Elijah, starting with this verse in Malachi 4, 5 through 6, which reads, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Sunday's lesson says that the Jews developed a tradition that Elijah would appear before the Messiah came to the earth. I don't understand why the Sabbath school calls this a Jewish tradition when it is clearly prophesied to be the case in Malachi chapter 4. Jesus and the disciples likewise speak of this prophecy as the Sabbath school shows in Matthew 17.10 and Mark 6.15. Then the Sabbath school tells us that according to Matthew 11.14-15 and Luke 1.17, John the Baptist fulfilled this prophecy. And while this is true, are these verses saying that there will never be another one to come in the spirit and power of Elijah before the return of Christ? Let's take a look at some things that Ellen White said concerning Elijah. Well, for one, she said that the spirit and power of Elijah came to raise up William Miller and servants of God. She said, William Miller and servants of God were raised up in the spirit and power of Elijah to proclaim the message, who, like John, the forerunner of Jesus, felt compelled to lay the axe at the root of the tree. She also said this about someone coming in the spirit and power of Elijah in the future. She said, The Lord says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi 4, 5. Somebody is to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. And when he appears, men may say, You are too earnest. You do not interpret the scriptures in the proper way. Let me tell you how to teach your message. You must lay yourselves and your opinions on the altar of God. Put away your preconceived ideas and let the spirit of heaven guide you into all truth. So we can see from these two quotes that Ellen White did not think that the prophecy about Elijah was limited to John the Baptist. Now let's look at a parallelism in Malachi concerning the messenger of the covenant and Elijah the prophet. This is in Malachi 3 verses 1 and 2. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, said the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. So here we can clearly see the messenger of the covenant will be sent to us before the visible second coming. We can also see that this messenger has a purification message, a message of judgment. Now let's look at the parallel verse in Malachi chapter 4, verses 4 through 5, which reads, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So here again, we can see that Elijah the prophet has a warning message of judgment. We are admonished to remember the law of Moses. The next verse goes on to say that he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. So we can see that the messenger of the covenant and Elijah the prophet refer to the same person or rather the same office that brings a purifying message of judgment to God's people before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Ellen White applies this title, the messenger of the covenant, to both Moses and Christ in Gospel Workers. In Gospel Workers, page 20, she said, When Moses was chosen as the messenger of the covenant, the word given him was, Be thou for the people to Godward. And in Gospel Workers, page 44, she said, Christ, the messenger of the covenant, brought the tidings of salvation. And then to go even further, Christ himself applies the messenger of the covenant to John the Baptist. He said, Unto the multitudes concerning John, but what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And if ye receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. So again, the messenger of the covenant, Elijah the prophet, is the title given to the living prophet who brings a message of righteousness and judgment to the people of God by the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit in their day, be it Noah in his day, Moses in his day, John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, William Miller, Ellen White, and the messenger Ellen said was still to come from her day. Elijah the prophet is a transferable title that is given to the living spokesperson of God. 
The Holy Spirit is the common thread that is working in and through all the messengers alike. We can see this principle in 1 Peter 3, 18 through 20. It reads, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient. When once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. As Seventh day Adventists, we know that Christ did not descend to hell after he died on the cross to preach to the people there that were destroyed by the flood. This is what I used to believe this verse taught when I was a Catholic and even as an evangelical Protestant. But Adventists know that Christ rested in the grave between his death on the cross and the resurrection. We know that the lake of fire is not burning now and that the dead know nothing. This prison spoken of in 1 Peter 3.19 is the prison of bondage to sin. Christ preached to the antediluvians by the same spirit who quickened him. Christ preached by the Holy Spirit a message of coming judgment in the days before the flood through the person of Noah, the living prophet in that day. Here we can see the truth, that is, the Holy Spirit is in all God's messengers alike. 2 Peter 1.21 says, Thus holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The mark of the remnant church is the keeping of the commandments of God and having the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy, which is the Holy Spirit speaking through a living prophet, Revelation 19.10. Roswell Cottrell in Early Writings, page 138 says, Again, we are forewarned that there would be false prophets in the last days. If there were to be no true prophesyings in these last days, how much easier to have stated the fact and thus cut off all chance for deception. So obviously, Roswell Cottrell is saying here that if there is going to be false prophets in the last days, Surely there would be true as well. Also, the gift of the Holy Spirit in the church, according to Ephesians 4, are apostles, prophets, etc., until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. Similarly, Ellen White said, God would have his people disciplined and brought into harmony of action that they may see eye to eye and be of the same mind and of the same judgment. God designs that there shall ever be a living testimony in the church. Notice the parallel here. The book of Ephesians tells us that the gifts of apostle and prophet will be manifest in the church until we all reach unity in the faith, something we can easily see has not happened yet in the SDA church. Ellen White tells us that God's people will be brought into harmony of action, see eye to eye, and be of the same mind and same judgment through his design. What is God's design to bring about unity in his church? Ellen tells us that God designs that there shall ever be a living testimony in the church. Notice that she speaks here in present tense, present truth. God designs that there will be a living testimony in the church today. The past is gone. The future does not yet exist. The present is all we have. God wants to lead us to our unity in the faith today in our present circumstances. For that, we need a living prophet for him to speak through. That is God's design. It always has been that way and always will be until we come to a perfect man. Ephesians 4.13 Do you know that God has sent a living prophet today to bear a message of judgment and righteousness in the spirit and power of Elijah? Don't miss the day of our visitation. Thank you for staying with us through the entire video. We invite you to visit our website, www.bdsda.com, to learn more about who we are and, just as important, who we are not. Please join us each week as we will continue to offer new and interesting insights for your Sabbath School studies. God bless. Many blessings.